we're moving right along in this project. Um, next thing we got to do though is we, we got the keyways cut in the shaft obviously, but there's also a keyway in this piece here. And again, this is the part that slides on that shaft. And there's a key in there that will key it as it slides. And the uh, original uh, key in here is just, number one, when we enlarge the bore, it's not deep enough, but also this thing over time has really worn to be much wider uh, than it should be. Let me zoom you in here close so you can see this and I'll let you kind of get an idea of what's been going on with this part. So this uh, keyway uh, is supposed to be a 3 8 inch key uh, that goes in here, but when you measure this, you know, we're at a little over a half inch wide. It should be 375 right there. So you see there's a lot of play inside of this and as a result of that, this is the key that came out of it. And uh, hopefully you can see that, but it's actually worn. So it was, it was up in this thing, or actually it was in this way. And every time that that thing would move, this, this key had that much play in it. And it literally wore a groove on either side of this key. So this keyway, you know, trying to, to salvage that keyway, I think is just a lost cause. Um, because the width is too, just too much. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a new keyway in here. We'll just broach it out uh, using a brooch set. So I've got this nice uh, Dumont brooch set that I bought several years ago. And uh, you know I've got the right uh, keyway brooch, 3 8 inch keyway brooch uh, to do this. Uh, the problem is, is I don't have the right bushing to use with this. So these, these, this brooch set came with a, a good selection of bushings. And what this little piece here does is it fits down inside this and it gives a, a backstop uh, for that keyway or that brooch to cut to cut the keyway. And uh, it seems like every time I use this, I never have the, uh, the piece that I need. But being a machine shop, uh, no big deal. We'll just we'll make the piece that we need. And I have a whole bunch of them over there in my toolbox that I have made for other jobs. Uh, but not one right for this one. So uh, we need to basically make a piece that, that looks about like this. Uh, and to start off with, we need to turn this. Uh, the diameter of this needs to be an inch and three quarter. And uh, the depth of this is four inches. So I'll probably go ahead and make this length here the entire four inches. So we'll have a uh, backing that entire way of this. Uh, so I've got a piece of uh, inch and 15 sixteenths uh, shafting. Uh, that actually came off the matcher project that, uh, from the old shaft we won't be using. So we're going to use that uh, to, uh, uh, as, a, as a contributing piece of metal toward this project. So let's go over to the lathe and uh, turn that out. All right, we're going to start by facing this in. I'm just going to clean this up, um, not really to any particular diameter. I just want to get it cleaned up for that outside collar. And then we'll turn this uh, inch and three quarter, uh, four inches deep. So we've got our brooch bushing made now, uh, inch and three quarter outside diameter, four inches long, made for a C size brooch. And uh, this basically just fits down into the shaft and then uh, using your brooch, you come in here and uh, using a press, press this out and uh, 
put some shims behind it and do it several times until you get it to the depth you want. So we're going to take this over to the hydraulic press now and uh, go ahead and press this out. Alright, I think this is ready to start broaching out. So we got the collar in here, or the bushing. We got the broach set and uh, we're just going to push this through and it will just start nibbling out. And uh, we'll have to make probably three passes with this, putting some shims behind it each time uh, to get it to the proper depth. So this is a long, boring job on this uh, hydraulic press here, one stroke at a time. Uh, what I'd give for a nice hydraulic ram powered uh, hydraulic press make this job much easier. Alright guys, so now uh, instead of having a real sloppy key slot in there, we have a very nice fitting uh, slot for a 3 8 inch key. So one more step done on this project. Alright, I'm working on the keyway now and um, this is the original keyway. Again, it's just uh, got this slot in it from where it's been slopping in there. It's all out of tolerance. So we're going to make a new keyway. And if you look at the original one, it has this little piece braced on the top here. And what that did was that captured this key inside that pulley so that it wouldn't slide out and it would travel with the pulley. So I've got a piece of quarter inch keyway that I cut and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna braise it in place. I could weld it, uh, but the old one was brazed and I like brazing, so heck, we'll, we'll braise it. So let's fire up the torch and, uh, and do that. Right, we'll let that cool. So we're starting to see how this is going together. My key is going to fit in here and it'll slide up into uh, this piece here and there's another piece that's going to come over here that will capture this piece inside this larger flange in here. And what this allows to do is now this whole piece can slide up and down the shaft and uh, that's basically how the variable speed mechanism uh, works on here. So this is moving real nice. I'm real happy with that. Uh, I think that's going to work just fine. So uh, I think we're, we're pretty much through with the key and now we're ready to start assembling the uh, paper pulley clutch. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put on the actual paper uh, clutch wheel 
And uh, what this is, as you can see, is, is stacks of, of friction board. And uh, this is cut out. These are about a quarter of an inch thick each. Um, and you buy it in sheets. It looks a lot like, uh, like hardboard, but it's, it's actually not hardboard. Uh, it's what they call friction board. And this is what they use to make these uh, paper pulleys with, uh, or at least one material that you can make paper pulleys with. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I imagine you can still get this. Uh, the stuff that we have here, uh, the museum purchased a bunch of this stuff back in the early 1980s when uh, Taylor Iron Works up in Macon, Georgia went out of business. They were a manufacturer of uh, steam engines and all kinds of old equipment. And uh, they, of course, worked on this type of machinery all the time. They had a good bit in their stock. When they went out of business, the museum went up there and bought a bunch of stuff out of their inventory. And they actually purchased all the sheets of this, uh, this uh, friction board that they had. And uh, we still have quite a bit of it uh, here in storage. But um, I didn't actually cut these out. Uh, one of the other workers here uh, laid these out with a compass on the board and just cut them out with a bandsaw. Took a hole saw to uh, drill through here a little bit oversized. I think that's a two inch hole. Uh, it doesn't need to be right on the shaft. And then uh, using this outside flange, came in and drilled the holes. So this uh, was pretty much ready for me to put on and it just slides up on here and uh, sandwiches in between here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some nuts and uh, tighten all this up. So we've got the paper pulley on here now and uh, it's on the shaft and what I need to do is I need to actually turn this to the right diameter and get all of these exactly the same diameter and turning true on the shaft. So I've actually mounted it up on the shaft on the lathe. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous because it's got a lot of length in here. Uh, if we have to I can get a steady rest and put in there uh, but I'd rather not because we got that key way to deal with. Uh, but anyway, we're going to try this, maybe take some light passes and uh, clean up this disc and get it turned down to the right diameter. Now I've got just a high speed steel cutter in here, kind of ground to a knife edge and uh, I may have to play around uh, with the grind on this thing. I'm not really used to cutting this kind of material so uh, it may take some experimenting uh, with a cutter but I am using high speed steel. I think that will cut it better than uh, a carbide insert in this case. Uh, I think I'm going to take some some towels and lay down around here. I'm sure this is going to make a mess and I uh, don't want to get all this uh, paper stuff down in my lathe and on this oil if I can keep from it. So um, let's lay some towels in there. the friction board turned on the pulley and this is now pretty much now ready all to go back together and start reassembling. Um, I think I've got all the machining work done uh, so now again reassembly time. So anyway the, the pulley's already on the shaft obviously it's captured in there. Uh, I can't remove it right now because the key won't come out of the keyway which is fine. We want it to be there. That's where it needs to be. So the next thing we need to do is there's a, a little collar 
uh, that fits over this uh, machined area here. And this is basically the, uh, the piece that allows us to move this, uh, slide it back and forth. You'll see as we get in there. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this back on. And it just takes some little uh, quarter inch bolts that's holding it in there. I was looking for some square head quarter inch bolts, but we don't seem to have any new ones. And uh, the old ones were just really, really bad. So anyway, we're putting hex on here. I may try to order some um, square head stuff and, re and replace this. This is easy to get to just to keep it authentic on the, on the machine. All right, so next um, there's these brackets and there's two of these. And um, these slots fit on these little ears uh, on this piece. And this is where the uh, handle and everything attaches to. And there's a piece that comes out of the bottom here. And we'll put this one on first. Let's see. I'll just snug that for right now. And the other side. This side gets the long handle. And this is what's used to basically control the friction on this. And it looks like uh, one of these was w w wider than the other. I think I got that on upside down. So let's take it off and flip it over. All right, that looks good. All right, so the next piece to go on is going to be this collar here. And that just slides over the shaft. And let me grab this piece down here. And this uh, bracket here will go on. like such and I need to find a bolt for that one I think this one here will work All right, so now uh, we're ready to start getting the bearings ready to go back on. First thing is, is there's a collar that goes on each side, and these basically you adjust on here to uh, to adjust the thrust, keep this uh, shaft from uh, moving laterally in there. Basically, this will butt right up against uh, the bearings on either side. And I'm going to hold off putting wheel. I'll show you guys. Here's the bearing block with the bad bearings. Uh, we decided not to re-pour these bearings. Uh, they fit on here very good. Uh, you know, we turned this shaft to the same diameter as the old one, and uh, this bearing feels good. So, and they were working fine. Uh, so, we're just going to let them go like this. This is a fairly slow turning shaft on the machine. Uh, so, anyway, we're, we're going to skip the pouring the bearings, but. And we'll adjust these. We'll fine tune these uh, collars uh, once we get it over on the sawmill, back on the sawmill, to get these adjusted just right. But again, with both of these in there, basically they're they're separating it out, and it won't allow the shaft to move. It'll keep it in the right position. And uh, these collars here will just rotate with the shaft up against the uh, edge of the bearing. Now, I'm going to pull that off for right now. And I'm just going to snug this one down. 
I am going to go ahead and put this bearing uh, in place. And again, it's a good tight fit. Um, I'm happy with how that looks, so we're not going to worry about adjusting it. And then uh, on the end, we have the gear. So let me find my key. Here it is. And let me uh, let me go do some grinding on this uh, to make it fit. Before it was uh, milled out on a vertical mill with the round slot. This one here we got a slope slot, so I need to just grind the back side of this to match the uh, the profile of that that slope. All right, we just ground the edge of this uh, key up a little bit, so that should now uh, fit in there just fine uh, to the depth I need to go. And uh, we've got the gear that engages the uh, sawmill carriage. There's a rack and pinion system, basically. And again, I'm not exactly sure where this needs to be placed. So I'm just going to snug it in on right now. Um, let's, uh, Very good. So there's some set screws in here and um, I'll probably just snug that in again and we'll fine adjust the position of this once we get it over on the sawmill because I'm not exactly sure where it needs to be on that shaft. But that's uh, pretty much the way it came off right there. So uh, I think this is ready to go back on. Okay, so we got this back on the sawmill now and uh, everything is reassembled and on here the way it should. So you can see this whole mechanism here is the part that we rebuilt. Uh, you got the spur gear going in down here or into this uh, larger gear that's on a rack and pinion that adjusts the carriage back and forth. And this is the clutch mechanism. You see it's got a disc back here behind it. And this paper pulley basically runs on this. And by moving the lever, this uh, pulley will either slide forward or backward, which will make, it go, make the carriage go forward or backwards. And the farther out you go on this disc, the faster the, the surface speed is, so it goes faster or slower, we're in, exactly in the center, it basically just stops. So uh, it's a kind of a neat mechanism. Uh, quite honestly, some of the later belt-driven carriages are a lot more efficient, but this sawmill was built back in the late 1880s, uh, and it was quite ingenious for its time. So uh, we're firing the boiler up right now, and uh, we're going to give this like a little test run. Uh, the blade is not on the mill today. We actually had to take it off to have some work done to it, but we do want to check this out. So we won't saw anything today, but we do want to at least uh, make sure everything's going to work right and try to get it adjusted so that when we do get back up in operation, we'll be ready to go. All right, we've got everything back on the machine now, or on the sawmill, and running. Uh, so hopefully, let me, I'm going to show you this work in a minute, but first off, kind of give you an overview of what's going on. So as you see, there's a pulley over here with the belt that's coming off the steam engine, and that drives the main arbor, and it goes over, and normally the saw blade is on this end down here. And again, I, we have the saw blade off right now, uh, actually in the shop getting some work done to it. Uh, they were having to fix one of the teeth on it, and uh, they were going to hammer it, I think, too. Uh, so it's not on here right now, but we're just testing the carriage. But if you look, there's a big flat plate here, and there's a, a paper pulley on there causing a 90 degree angle, which comes over again to this big uh, plate here. And again, we have another paper pulley on there that drives this gear. And this is the, the whole part that we were just working on. And that goes down in the gear at the end. You can see that little gear goes to another gear, which then engages in a rack and pinion on the bottom of the carriage down here. You can see the rack, there's another gear on the other side. Uh, maybe I can get over here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but anyway. But that's what drives the whole carriage back and forth. And as you can see, we got a log on here just to give some weight to try it out on. So uh, I'm going to run the camera. I think I'm going to let David uh, run the, the carriage here and show you how this works. All right, so we got a little stop in there that puts it in neutral. As you can see, he pulled the, pulled the pulley back, and the farther he pulls it back, the faster it turns. He goes back toward the center, and it slows down. So we got variable speed in there. Now he pushes it the other way, and uh, the carriage 
to move forward on the on the saw mill and feed uh, the log into the blade uh, to saw. So it's a pretty ingenious little mechanism. Like I said, this uh, uh, came about back in the late 1800s. Uh, I think this sawmill was made in the late 1880s, early 1890s. So uh, it works pretty good. showed this engine in a couple of my other videos running earlier but uh, in case you didn't see them this is the uh, little Atlas uh, engine about a 25 horsepower steam engine uh, that powers the, the sawmill and uh, we're running this off of our brand new boiler we just got built which is uh, right over here so this is a uh, boiler that was just installed this past year made to be a copy of the old Frick boiler that we had our old boiler was condemned uh, just being an old boiler made back in the 1920s. So uh, we had uh, Mr. Jonas Stutzman up in Ohio. Uh, he took the old boiler and basically made an, as exact of a copy of it as he could. Uh, but it's all a welded, certified, uh, ASME stamped, approved uh, a boiler. Uh, just made to look like an old one. Uh, and really it is just like the old one. The only big difference is that uh, this boiler is welded while the old boiler was riveted. And uh, Mr. Stutzman actually uh, put fake rivets on here to make it look like a riveted boiler. Um, and again, that's power in the sawmill. Or the steam engine here that's running the sawmill. big pulley or a big belt on the outside comes up goes around an idler here and then that's what's driving the uh, the sawmill carriage All right, guys, that concludes the uh, sawmill clutch rebuild project. And uh, I'll be the first to admit that it took a little bit more work than I had anticipated up front. Uh, I think I figured up all my time just in the machine shop uh, doing the rebuild part. And it was about 24 hours of uh, labor time. Uh, and that was stretched out over really probably about a week and a half because most of that was done in the afternoons and the evenings after work and so forth. Uh, and that's not counting the time uh, taking it on off the sawmill and reinstalling it on the sawmill and testing it and adjusting it and doing all that kind of stuff. So just the rebuild part took about 24 hours of shop time. But uh, anyway, glad to do that for the museum. Uh, saved them some money and we got our sawmill uh, back tuned up and running well. So uh, we'll be ready to start running it on a regular basis here uh, very soon. So again, guys, uh, as always, thank you very much uh, for your watching and being there and uh, uh, thank you for your comments that you send in. Uh, thank you to my subscribers and uh, uh, we'll try to keep this content coming. Thanks a lot guys.